Hello, I'm Odin, and just this last Friday was the final episode of WandaVision, and I saw what I wanted to make from the show. It's Wanda's new Scarlet Witch headdress. First thing I need is a head to use for creating the piece. I brought out my foam-covered foam head. I have a video all about how I made this. Uh, there's a link in the upper corner there right now. The blue head is a better size for this project than my head. So my plan is to use the craft foam to get a basic shape. I can take some measurements off of the computer screen. So the bottom of the crown is pretty much equal with the bottom of her nose. It actually rides very high in her head, like it's right along her hairline, because you can see her hair. I made sure I had a really good idea of the size and shapes of the headdress, and I started cutting out a rough size from the craft foam. Pinning the craft foam to the head helps. It moves less while I draw the shape that I want. Peak needs to rise up a little bit. Actually, why don't I make the peak right at, just with the way I've got it stretched. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make the, the point right here where it transitions from being straight up and down into being rounded. And it's actually still too low, so I can go up a little higher than that. It doesn't take too long before I get a really good shape and I can cut out my first rough draft. And then I pin that back onto the head and take another good look at it. Okay, so for my first try, this isn't bad. I think this is a little, little too skinny, so probably this line needs to drop down. This, when this line drops down, if all the, the relationships drops down a little bit, not a lot, I'm talking three millimeters, four millimeters, not a lot. Um, the, the, the peaks seem okay. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this particular piece of foam, and instead of cutting up any more foam, I'm gonna scan this into the computer, and I'm gonna use an art program to trace this out and start playing with the ratios, and I'll start making paper ones until I find the shape that I like, and then I'll make the details for it. It took most of an evening, but I got a paper pattern made by scanning the foam piece into the computer and tracing it with the Inkscape. I decided to cut out a second pattern just in case because I plan on cutting one of these up into little pieces. First, I traced the full outline onto some two millimeter what the foam. I flipped the pattern over when I was tracing the center to keep the design as symmetrical as I could. And when I cut it out, I cut about five millimeters outside of my lines. I'm leaving some extra foam around all the edges for right now. The extra around the outside edges gives me a place to pin the foam without putting holes into the final piece. What I really need is the extra wiggle room for when I glue the next layer on later. I'm able to compare the new design and the wider head and cheek placements are much better than what they were when I did it in craft foam. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. What I'm gonna need to do is cut out all the inside stuff, at least on one side, so I can trace it onto the piece that I'm gonna be gluing to, and then I need to cut out a whole another set from a second layer of foam that I can glue onto this piece. This is gonna be the time consuming part. <laughs> I start cutting pieces off the pattern and trace the edges onto each part as I go. I only cut out one side of the pattern because I can flip the paper over and keep the lines as symmetrical as I can. Also, there is a lot of really intricate designs, and I only want to cut all these out once. Some parts of the pattern will become a second layer, so I save those, but I still trace the outlines of each cut onto the first full layer. That'll give me a guide for when I'm gluing the pieces together. Even with the center spike, I only cut one side, flipping the paper over and then drawing to complete the spike. And now I've got all the outlines traced onto the first layer, which will give me a guide for gluing on the second layer. To make the second layer of panels, I trace all the pattern pieces again, but this time I'm using a marker. When the paper is lifted, you can see the outline of the part. And when I cut them out, I cut right along the inside edge of each thick black line, where I know the edge of the paper was. And for the forehead, that is one big intricate piece. And I know that what I need to remove is all the black ink areas, and never cut into any of the parts that I want to keep. Now, I can just glue the foam together right away, but I don't really like how sharp the corners of all the cut edges are. So to soften them up, I have a tiny little grinding bit on my rotary tool, and I'm just rounding the corners over. 
Only on the inside cuts right now. I'll fix the outside after all the parts are glued. So this is really kind of hard to see on camera, but these parts have the edges that are rounded over and these parts are still just cut. It's a subtle change, but one that'll help the headdress look manufactured and finished and not just cut layers of foam. And getting all the little spindly pieces of the forehead is not easy. And I'm glad to have such a fine grinding point for these areas. It's one of those weird little subtle things that I think is really gonna pay off. But if you're not careful doing it, it'd be real easy to put a gouge into a piece and have to cut a new one. So is it worth it? You know, it probably is. I, I suspect it's not gonna look like cut foam and I'm really excited about that. There was one more panel line in the forehead, which I first draw in with a pencil, and then I cut about halfway through the foam, not all the way, just a line on the top. And then when I put a heat gun to it, the foam shrinks ever so slightly, which opens up the cut, making a nice, clean detail line. I have the heat gun set pretty low, because that helps with the shrinking of all the fuzz from the sanding. And I need it low, because the foam is so thin, it can cook and blacken pretty easily. I heat seal all the edges and tops of the small panels. I can see the change in the foam when it happens, but I'm not sure if the camera can see it. I pin the first layer to the head again, this time using pins with tiny little heads. And I'm really fitting the foam to the shape of the head. I use a lot more pins this time. I want to glue everything together while the parts are in the right shape to fit a face. If I glued the cheeks on when everything was flat on the table, the points would be more likely to just stick out and away from the face. But I'm making the curves with the glued parts now because I want it to stay that way. And when it dries, it will. On the top, right on the tips, there are two indents that are lower than the bottom layer. So I cut the top half all the way through the foam, which lets me push the foam in and create a divot. And then a drop or two of super glue in the back will hold that cut in place. Yeah, don't worry, I'm thinking it too. This is Mystique, cosplaying as the Scarlet Witch. Then I cover the base layer with contact cement, avoiding the points at the top, because nothing else is gonna glue up there, and not getting any glue on Mystique's face. Always double check that the tips are equal and straight, because they're gonna stiffen when the glue dries. Next is coating all the tiny parts, and I try to use just enough glue the brush is so big, it'd be pretty easy to just drown the parts in glue. After about 10 minutes, the glue has dried and is ready to stick. I start with the cheek points and carefully apply the top layer, following the pencil lines on the bottom layer. And I keep adding more of the top layer pieces, keeping the parts separated as they need to be and with all the panel lines as equal as I can. For the forehead, I place the center first and then work each piece down to where I like them. The pencil lines are more guidelines. They're not gonna line up perfectly now that I have two curved layers and both were drawn from the same pattern. Now, if you're quick, you can push the pieces even after the foam is kinda lightly stuck, but if you've mashed them flat, <laughs> they're just gonna stay there. It didn't take long to get everything stuck down and looking pretty good. Okay, typically at this point, I'm ready to say unpin it and start cutting the excess off the edges. You know, I left it a little long on purpose so I could cut them back down and make them all match nicely. I don't want to do that this time. I want to give the contact cement a chance to really dry. I want to give the super glue a chance to really dry. So I'm going to let this sit for a little while and in a few hours I'm going to come back and then I'll unpin it and I'll start sanding the edges down and starting to really make it look right. After a few hours, okay, well, overnight, I started to pull the pins out and remove the headdress. Perfect. So I'm joking because it fell off, but I'm thinking it is actually perfect because it's holding its shape. So one of the things I tried to do, and looks like I was fairly successful with, is I added another layer just on the back here. Now this isn't actually touching any part of her head, so that's not in the way, but that's an additional piece to help keep this curve locked in. Uh, the ink is just because this is a piece of scrap foam that's not important. It's oversized all around the edges, so I need to very carefully trim back so it's only as big as the top layer, and then I can clean it up and paint it. The first step is to cut all the edges so they match the top layer. 
It's tricky cutting now because I can't just set the project flat on the table to cut it. Doesn't fit me at all. Okay. Next, I sand all the cut edges. The sawing motion leaves marks and I want everything to be smooth and clean. But on the front edges, the parts that'll frame her face, I round over the corners again. Now I don't mind the back edges being 90 degrees, but I want the front smooth and finished looking. Sanding the tips of these points is kind of tricky because I'm working with the rotation of the sanding drum, so it rolls over the tips. It's easy to bend up a fine point like this by not paying attention to which way the sanding drum is rotating. I do clean up the edges and the sides, making all the edges clean and free of knife marks. And then I go back with my tiniest of grinding bits and make as many of the corners rounded as I can. It didn't make all that much dust, but cleaning it all off before painting is important. With my heat gun on a low setting again, I heat seal all the sanded edges and any other exposed foam. And I'm super happy it's holding its shape. I'll need a way to hold it for painting the plastic dip, so I stick a T-pin into that third layer in the back, and then I clip a painting stick to the pin to hold it for me. That's about as much as this can handle. It's got a pretty good amount of weight on it, but that should work. That'll let me paint it. So what I want to do is cover this with black plastic dip. Uh, since it's kind of a dark red anyway, I'm not worried about using black as a base color. If it was going to be a brighter red, I would use white or even red plastic dip. But I don't have red, I don't think. I'll check. So I'm going to use black. Yeah, I didn't have any red. So I sprayed two coats of black plastic dip over the whole thing. And painting is really pretty easy. First, I cover the entire project in a dark red or even kind of a maroon color and let it dry. Then I carefully paint just the surface of the second layer with more of a, well, scarlet color. Now I'm being really careful not to get any of this color between any of the panels. When the paint is dry, I can seal the colors with a matte Mod Podge sealer and then super glue some elastic straps to the back of the mask or to the back of the headdress. All the materials I use for this project I already had in the shop. I put a part list in the description. Now I just put elastic on it because that made sense, right? It's, it's a fairly simple little mask or headdress, a little bit of elastic, you could just uh, comb your hair back over. Uh, I figured that would work really well, but if you wanted to, you could also attach a couple little pieces of tool or, or like lace backing onto the back of the mask, and then you could actually just affix it with uh, spirit gum, and then it'd be glued to your face and you'd be kind of free with your hair. And if you're wearing a wig, attach this to the front of your wig so it's all one piece, and that would be the right way to go. Now, if you do want to make one of these, you can, because the pattern I made for this, that's right there in the description. You can download that for free. And this is probably a good weekend project, so don't be too intimidated. There's a lot of little cutting, but it's not really technically difficult, I don't think. And the Dremel stuff, that's optional. I liked it, I like the way it looks, but I, I by no means is that required. Just enjoy Wanda's new headdress as seen in the very last episode of WandaVision. I really enjoyed the show, and I'm looking forward to more of the Disney Plus Marvel series, and I'm pretty excited about, well, the next couple ones that are coming up, specifically, of course, Loki. But I'm going to enjoy Falcon and the Winter Soldier as it's going to play out first. And I hope that you've enjoyed WandaVision as much as I did, because that was a creative show, and I enjoy her new look, and I'm excited to see more of her in, well, I hope the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, right? I got a lot of Marvel props I'm gonna be able to do this year, and I'm looking forward to doing it, and I hope you're gonna enjoy it with me. And you know, I'm gonna be making most of them out of EVA foam, because there's gonna be lots of different ways that you can make Marvel props, but this is how Odin makes. What's that character's name? What's the cartoon character's name? Johnny Bravo. It's Johnny Bravo, that's what I'm thinking of. It's funny, with all the chemical smells that could be going on, with all the contact cement that I've used, what do I smell? Super glue. I want to thank Mark S, Ace, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. 
Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.